Iron Lady. Indeed, some of those who have worked closely with the late Prime Minister say the show is highly politicised and does not do justice to Margaret Thatcher's legacy. Joining me now is a former aide to Margaret Thatcher, Niall Gardner, living now in Washington, D.C. Niall, welcome Niall, to welcome Credlund. Niall, welcome to Credlund. Thanks, right. uh, thanks very much, Rowan. Thank you. So, Niall, thanks for joining us. You've seen all 10 episodes of season four of The Crown. Spoiler alert, don't give too much away. But what did you make of it, Niall? Well, I have to say that, uh, you, know, the, you know, the fourth season of The Crown is, is tremendous storytelling. It's very well made. It's compelling uh, television uh, with, you know, tremendous cinematography, production design, acting, etc. And I, as you mentioned, uh, Emma Corrin, who plays uh, Lady Diana, does an absolutely superb job, as does the rest of the cast. Uh, and I have to say as well that Gillian uh, Anderson, who portrays uh, Margaret Thatcher in this, does actually overall a very good job in terms of her performance. Uh, she gets uh, Lady Thatcher's uh, voice largely right, her mannerisms, her her way of of walk, walking, uh, etc. So, so I think that you know the Crown does does pretty well overall. But uh, I think at the same time there are quite a few flaws with the uh, depiction of of Margaret Thatcher, and also there is a a distinctly sort of left wing political bent to the show uh, <laughs> as well in terms of its. Uh, interpretation of Thatcherism and its impact on, on Britain. So overall, I'd say it's very, very mixed, actually. There's some very good scenes involving Margaret Thatcher. Uh, there are also some, some bad ones as well. So, so I think it's very much a sort of, uh, you know, mixed, uh, mixed approach from the makers of The Crown. And it's pretty clear, isn't it, Niall, that Britain today uh, is far, far better off than it was in the dreadful Callaghan, uh, Heath, uh, Wilson era prior to Margaret Thatcher. She did so much. She made it a dynamic economy. Um, do you think the makers of The Crown, I mean, as, you know, all of Hollywood, they're clearly of the left, do you think they really understand Thatcher's legacy and understand Thatcher and her policies? Um, I think that um, clearly, I mean, some of the writers on, on The Crown uh, are not uh, big fans of, uh, of Thatcherism. Uh, and that, that's certainly conveyed in two or three of the episodes in, in season four. Uh, and I think that uh, clearly uh, some of the writers here do not grasp the, the huge significance of, of Margaret Thatcher's period in office. And Margaret Thatcher turned Britain around from the sick man of Europe into the economic powerhouse of, of Europe. I mean, Britain was literally on its knees in the late 1970s, and Margaret Thatcher really saved Britain from you know, what was uh, viewed at the time as inevitable uh, decline. Uh, so she turned the UK around, and the United Kingdom today is a vastly more self-confident nation than it was in the 1970s. And the Socialist Labour Party, of course, ran Britain into the ground in the 70s. And Margaret Thatcher said, enough, uh, enough is enough. And she, she said that she would not accept the idea of British decline. And she won three general elections in a row. She, she did not lose a single general election. She was ousted, of course, by uh, the Wets, the left wing of the Conservative <laughs> yes. Party, in part over, over Europe. But her overall achievements were absolutely uh, spectacular. And uh, Great Britain owes uh, the Iron Lady a huge debt of gratitude today. I couldn't agree with you more. Um, in one of the scenes in The Crown, uh, we get this kind of conflict, Margaret clashing with the Queen. There's this idea that these two powerful women didn't really like each other, didn't get on. Uh, do you think this is a realistic representation of their relationship? And also tell us about your relationship with Margaret Thatcher. Yeah, so actually, I, I don't think that, uh, you know, the Crown's interpretation of the dynamic between uh, Margaret Thatcher and the Queen uh, is accurate, actually, because I, I do think that as the two most powerful women in the world in the 1980s, uh, there was actually a very, very close working relationship between Margaret Thatcher and, and the Queen. It was not adversarial in any way. Uh, Lady Thatcher had a huge respect for the Queen, uh, and it is very significant that uh, the Queen actually attended uh, Lady Thatcher's 80th birthday uh, party, uh, which I also attended, actually. I had the opportunity to meet with the Queen then. 
Uh, and it was very unusual, of course, for the Queen to attend uh, a politician's uh, birthday celebration. And so that was a, you know, a demonstration of the fact that the Queen, I think, had a, had a very, very good working relationship with, uh, with Margaret Thatcher. I think the two leaders got on very well. They were both tremendously dedicated to, uh, to serving the British people, to advancing the greatness of the British nation. Uh, and I think that the Queen is creating, in a fictionalized manner, some kind of tension between uh, Margaret Thatcher and the Queen, which simply did not exist. Uh, and certainly, uh, Lady Thatcher always spoke extremely highly of the Queen and the monarchy. She was not dismissive at all in any way of the monarchy. Uh, and, and I think that, uh, you know, the Queen had, had tremendous respect as well for, for Margaret Thatcher. So, uh, you know, I think a tremendous amount of mutual respect between, between the two. But the Queen, uh, sorry, the Crown creates some kind of adversarial uh, relationship which simply uh, did not exist. Now, just quickly, Niall, before we go, question without notice. What do you think Margaret Thatcher would make of Boris Johnson today? Uh, her replacement now in the uh, head of the Conservative government, uh, rushing around with uh, eco policies and, uh, and all sorts of Orwellian uh, lockdowns. What do you think Margaret Thatcher would make of today's Conservative Party Tories, Niall? You know, she would be critical of some aspects of today's Conservative Party, which is very different to the Conservative Party of the 1980s. Uh, but at the same time, uh, she would have mightily cheered uh, Brexit uh, and she would have greatly supported uh, Boris Johnson's uh, effort, his drive and determination to uh, to see the UK freed from the shackles yes. of the European yes, Union. Absolutely. Uh, and, and Margaret Thatcher, of course, laid the foundations for Brexit uh, and, and she would have a hugely celebrated Britain's exit from the European Union. Absolutely. Niall Gardner, so great to chat to you. Thanks so much with your thoughts on The Crown, Margaret Thatcher and Princess Di. Thanks so much, mate. Thanks very much. Thanks for watching the Heritage Foundation's YouTube channel. With more than half a million members, we are the nation's largest conservative research and education institution. We believe the principles and ideas of the American founding are worth conserving and renewing. Please help us further our mission by subscribing to this channel and sharing our videos with your family and friends.